Uh, you can see some of these data. Some of it is a little small. In summary, East and West Sussex have got just over 300,000 people aged 65 years and over. Um, yeah, that's quite a lot. And I think you'll see this coming out, and probably you know this already. There is a challenge, I think, in Sussex with the demographic profile. This actually makes the point even more dramatically in a way. Old age support ratio is very simply the number of people in work divided by the number of people retired. So if you have uh, an old age support ratio of one, you've got one person in work and one person retired, which is not, well, you can't manage that. And I think one of the things that struck me about these data for West Sussex and East Sussex is that there is a problem. So um, we've got around, what, two to two and a half uh, old age support ratio, two to two and a half people in work to every one person retired. And if you look at that compared to Berkshire, for example, the figures there are nearer three and a half to four. You've got quite a lot of old people <laughs> in East and West Sussex. You probably know that already, but uh, the situation is predicted to get worse. You can see the 2033 projections for West Sussex are dropping quite a bit. So that's a bit, a snapshot of demography. There is a challenge there. I think there's a challenge with this as well. And I, I, we try to put this in some sort of context, e-health, telecare, telemedicine. And, you know, it is to do with broadband, but it is also to do with the transport provision. Um, it's to do uh, with availability uh, of um, services, it's to do with energy usage, and I think we can't detach this from a bigger picture. There is a bigger picture about economic infrastructure, which will make this work, make these technologies work, or completely stymie them. So we have to get that infrastructure sorted out. And this is one of the aspects of that infrastructure. Again, I'm sorry, it is quite small, some of the data. So in East Sussex, um, I think I can probably point, uh, East Sussex, uh, in terms of broadband, you've got very little, if any, superfast broadband, believe it or not. There's a very tiny red dot there. I mean, what you've got people are using, uh, which is the take up, the green one, excluding broadband, but you are not doing very well in terms of superfast broadband. I think in uh, West Sussex it's slightly better uh, in terms of superfast broadband and take up is, is okay. Um, but generally, the whole broadband position is worse than average in East and West Sussex. So there's a challenge there. If we're going to be using broadband as part of the infrastructure in supporting this, we've got a problem in East and West Sussex. So let's move on then, just to look at uh, health and social care provision. First of all, long-term conditions in primary care trusts. I think if you look at those data, the total number of people with long-term conditions in Brighton, East Sussex and West Sussex is around 400,000 people, which again is quite a lot. In fact, Strangely, that seems to be more than the population of people over 65, which is around 300,000. So we've obviously got long-term conditions in, not just in elderly people. Um, so again, I think you are over the odds there with the number of people who've got the problems that we need to be looking at, that we need to be managing. In terms of provision, these are just numbers of nursing homes and care homes together and numbers of domiciliary care agencies. It's not actually beds, but it gives you a, a flavour of what you've got. You've actually got a lot of nursing and care homes. In total there, you've got over 500, which compares to about 230, 240 in Kent and 200 in Surrey. So you seem to be well provided with <coughs> nursing and care homes and You've got about an average number, if you add east and west up, about 180 domiciliary care agencies, which in terms of population is about average. But for some reason, people perhaps want to either retire or they have retired and they end up in nursing and care homes. You have got a lot of provision in nursing and care homes. 
And this is third sector. So these are charities uh, who actually support the elderly people. Um, again, if you combine East and West Sussex, you've got about an average total of charities who support these sort of people, but you've got quite a lot of income. So you've got some big hitters. The top five actually are spending quite a lot on these agendas. So that's pretty positive, I think, in a way. So, again, apologies for the scale of this. But the summary is, you ain't spending much. West Sussex, £6.74. Uh, in, I think, where's, oh, Brighton and Hove, a little bit more, 12. Um, yeah, I think East Sussex is there, about the same. So, these are data which are, I think they're total data, really, between 2006 and 2009, telecare per person. So, not very much. But then nobody's spending very much, apart from Slough, for some reason, <laughs> who must have spent everything that they had on this. <laughs> But, you know, certainly West Sussex is below the average. I think East Sussex and, uh, and Brighton are, are certainly average-ish. But nobody's spending that much. So what have you got in terms of industry? Well, you'll see some of the companies, I hope, um, out there. These are just happened to be companies located in East or West Sussex. And there's a list of them there. Uh, the majority of them are very small, or pretty small. Um, but you have got some big potential players in the comms companies and computer companies, Orange and Honeywell in, in, in Sussex, who are becoming more and more interested in this agenda. So there is something interesting there. And of course, you are about, you, you, you're about average. Kent's got similar numbers and so has, uh, has Surrey. So industry base, about average. And to be honest, if you total uh, Kent, Surrey and Sussex, uh, what have you got there? I don't know, 20, 30 companies. I guess, well, some of the data we've shown, that they're probably not more than between 50 and 60 in the country. So we've got 30, 40% of them in the three counties. So although it might not look like a big list, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. <coughs> what about what's going on in universities in these particular agendas? Well, obviously, you've got a medical school, and that is a very, very positive start. Um, there is some research. Um, it's not an enormous amount. It might look quite good, three million EPSRC grants, five projects over Brighton and the University of Sussex. A few publications, but this is over the last five years, to be honest. And, and those figures are over the last five years. So we trawled everything that we can find over the last five years. So it's not enormous amounts of money and not enormous numbers of publications. There's a bit of training, but they tend to be fairly ad hoc bolt-on modules to existing um, CPD courses or, or Masters of Engineering courses. So, hmm. But that is state of the art, to be honest, in Kent and Surrey as well. So it's, it's not, not far off an average, really. So let's quickly finish with a swap. What do I think that we have in Sussex. Well, yeah, you've got a lot of elderly people, uh, relatively wealthy, I think, relatively wealthy, and I think that's um, a real strength. That is a potential big market. You've got relatively good long-term health provision, lots of nursing and care homes, a pretty strong third sector, investing quite heavily as, a cha as char charities in this particular area, and you've got some industry and university base. So there is something to work with there in terms of strengths. But you do have this really interesting demographic challenge with old age support ratios. Uh, you know, the number of people working compared to the number of people retired, you are not very good at the moment in that position. And the rest of the stuff, to be honest, is not just Sussex stuff. This is just a challenge for most people in terms of uh, public sector funding. There is not very much dedicated training, and of course you've got the integration problems. And there is some track record, and I'll just make one or two references to some projects which I've managed to pick up through the contacts I've been working with. But, you know, in terms of an equivalence to Kent, you're, you're not in the Kent League, if I might be so bold. They've got a history and a track record back to 2004. 
with some fairly big investments in this particular area. And obviously the whole system demonstrator was, was the, the biggest one. So that might be determined as a weakness. But there are some opportunities. I think the private sector market in Sussex is, has got some real potential. You've got a lot of elderly people. You've got relative wealth. And I think they're going to be wanting and demanding more of these sort of technologies. I think generically there is a challenge with I think some of the infrastructure but I think we have to work with what we've got and, and, and there will be smart metering roll, rolling out in 2015 to every house. There will be digital TV. These don't necessarily need broadband but you know there is an opportunity I think for more broadband access to be used in this particular sector and of course one of the things that is both a strength and a weakness, is that we are going to have to address this challenge. The public sector has got no choice. It's got to do things more efficiently and more effectively. And the more you squeeze it, I hope, the more people will recognise that this might be one of the tools in the toolbox that can help public sector deliver. You have a medical school. You have two very good universities. There are opportunities to develop skills and training around this, and this is absolutely critical. Um, and of course, we can build on now some of the initiatives that are rolling out nationally to do with three million lives. That's really brought it up people's agendas and the whole system demonstrator. These are generic. These are not Sussex specific, but they should be mentioned really. There are still barriers to adoption. There are still training and uh, skills agendas that aren't being addressed. There are still challenges around standards and interoperability. And, you know, one of the whole system demonstrator agendas was to try and look at the economics and the finances that is eventually going to come. That's something that we could discuss this afternoon. But for me, it is a real challenge. The business case has to be proven. And there's got to be a market for companies like the ones we've got out there to develop new products and offerings. So to conclude, this is a big challenge for you, I think, in Sussex. The demography worries me a bit, even though it is an opportunity. I think you have got a challenge with the infrastructure, the broadband access in particular. And it's ironic in a way, isn't it, that you know, e-health is probably more useful in more remote areas, and those are the remote areas that don't get broadband access. So you know, we, we've got that chicken and egg dynamic there. But you have got some really good opportunities. It's a relatively wealthy. Uh, part of the country, you've got a good medical school, and I think you have got not quite a clean sheet, because I know that you've got Sussex Stroke, Telemedicine, Just Checking, Simple Telehealth, you have been starting to do these, these pilots, so there is, it's not completely clean, there is some experience, but it is relatively clean sheet, I think you can learn from the, I mean there was an, an enormous amount of advice and help from people like Hazel, from Kent, who've been doing it for some years now, we can learn from their experiences, we don't have to make those mistakes again and we can really apply the best practice.